guys, this is Andrew with HKN, and today we're going to be giving an introduction to Gaussian random variables, also known as the normal random variable. So first we're going to define what the random variable is, and the thing that defines random variables really is their probability density functions, which basically says for what value of x, what probability that that value of x will come up. So what I mean is uh, this which is the probability density function for x, which says that you have fx of x is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared e to the x minus mu squared over 2 sigma squared. Um, so that basically says that for any value x, you plug it into this formula and it tells you the probability of getting that x if x is distributed as a Gaussian random variable. And so you might be thinking, what is this mu? What is this sigma? Well, uh, they're not just any random things. They're actually defined as the mean and variance of this random variable. So if you know the mean, that value is what you put in for mu. And if you know the variance, that value is sigma squared. So sigma here is the standard deviation. And so this is what a normal distribution PDF looks like. So we have a bunch of different ones kind of graphed here. The red one is the, uh, sorry, the blue one is the standard normal. It's what we call when it has zero mean and unit variance or unit standard, de uh, standard deviation, same thing. Um, and then you have a couple of different ones for different mu's and sigmas here. So uh, pause the video, take some time to look at this and kind of see how uh, different mu's and sigmas affect this normal distribution. Basically, a larger sigma makes it wider and a different mu shifts the center, shifts the, the maximum value. So now we're going to talk about our motivation for doing this video. So why are we even talking about Gaussian random variables? Well, we have to really talk about the law of large numbers and the central limit theorem. And so basically what these two theorems say is that if you take the sum of independent identically distributed, that is what IID stands for, independent and identically distributed random variables, if you take a sum of them and you average them, you end up with a Gaussian random variable. So more explicitly here, we have that the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum of x1, x2, xn, all divided by the number of variables that you take, ends up being Gaussian. And that is true for no matter what kind of distribution you use. So if you take a Poisson distribution or a exponential distribution, maybe not Poisson, but if you take an exponential distribution or a uniform distribution, you will end up with a Gaussian, as long as it has an infinite support. Um, and that will be centered at the mean and variance of, the, uh, of a single random variable in this sequence. And so another reason that we use is that many things in nature actually distribute uh, in a Gaussian way. Uh, so, you know, you look at uh, the n average number of particles hitting a point at a certain time. It's more than likely going to be Gaussian distributed if you look at it at any point in time. So uh, that's why it's also called the normal distribution because it's so normal. It comes up all of the time in nature and there's really no way to avoid using this. And it's why it's really significant to study it. So. Once we have looked at the PDF of this, we kind of want to look at the CDF. So the CDF is the cumulative distribution function, which basically says, what's the probability of getting a value for this random variable less than a certain number? So basically, this is the CDF, is you want to take the integral from negative infinity up to some value x is really what this should be. It should not be infinity, it should be x. Actually, if you take this integral, you end up with, you should just end up with one because of the definition of probability. So technically, um, this guy here should be x. So, uh, so this is the, what the, defi the definition is. Um, same thing here, that upper infinity should be an x. Uh, but basically, if we plug in what f, of x, what f sub x of x is here, we find that we have no analytic solution. There's no way to actually take this integral. e to the x squared is not integrable for any value of x. So luckily, we have calculated this extensively for a mean of 0 and a variance or a standard deviation of 1, uh, which is our standard normal. So that's, it's very nice. This has been calculated extensively it's, it's through something called the error function 
If you ever see something called ERFC, that's called the error function, and it's related to this cumulative distribution function of a Gaussian. Um, and actually, this is the table of the normal distribution here. So you see, you look for your, you look for the z value, which is the um, here. It's act, this is actually one minus uh, the cumulative distribution function. So if you look here, you look for a value of z. It tells you the probability of getting x greater or z greater than a certain value. So you look on the side, you have like say 0.6, and then you go over to 0.01. So that's the probability of having a z greater than 0.601. Uh, sorry, 61. And so for that one here, it's uh, 0.2709. So that's the probability for a standard normal of having x being greater, and the cumulative distribution is just 1 minus that. Uh, so moving on here, but what if our variable isn't zero mean and unit variance? So this has been calculated for a zero mean unit variance, but what happens if we have a mean of 7 and a variance of 3? Uh, what do we do then? Do we need to calculate this for every possible value? Well, luckily the answer is no. So we're just going to talk about that very quickly. So we're going to talk about how to relate any, any Gaussian to the standard Gaussian. So the standard Gaussian is normally written as normal 0, 1. So it's kind of a calligraphic N there. Um, and so what happens if we want to have a normal centered at mu and with a sigma squared variance. Well, very easily, if this is, if we call this z is distributed as this, we can write z as equaling the mean plus the standard deviation or the square root of the variance times our standard normal. 0, 1. So this is very, very useful. It allows us to pretty much, if we have something that can generate this distribution, we can generate any other normal distribution. But specifically, if we're using the cumulative distribution function, so the CDF, and actually the CDF of a Gaussian is normally written as phi, capital phi of x, where you plug in x and you get the probability that x is less than lowercase x. Um, so this is what we write here. And if we want to find this for any other uh, normal distribution, so say that we want to find it for z here, so we want to find the probability that z is less than some value x. Well, what we do is we say, OK, z is mu plus sigma over n0. So if we can write this as our capital X instead, this would make our life easier. So we want to know z less than uh, lowercase x. So if we say that z is mu plus sigma, so this is our capital X here. Um, so this guy here is our capital X. I apologize for the X doing double duty here, but it's actually just uh, how it's normally done, <laughs> normally. Um, so we have mu plus sigma capital X is equal to lowercase x. Um, uh, sorry, is less than or less than lowercase x. And you could put an equals to on this as well because for a continuous random variable, less than and less than are equal to the same thing because single point probabilities are zero. Um, we have mu plus sigma x is going to be less than x. So all we have to do is say we want the probability that x, just solving this here, we get x being less than uh, lowercase x minus mu over sigma. So saying you want the probability that z is less than lowercase x is the same as having the probability of big X being less than z minus mu over sigma. So basically, if you want the phi for this one, it's phi of lowercase z, subtract off the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. So we can use that table that was on the previous slide here. So using this table, 
if we want to calculate the probability that uh, some other distribution with a different mu and a different uh, sigma, all you have to do is uh, take the value you're looking for. So if, say you want the probability that z, so let's say probability that z is less than or equal to 0.6. And we know that the mu is equal to 1 and the standard deviation is equal to 4. So saying that the probability that z is less than 6 uh, is the same as just using phi of 0.6 minus the mean, which is 1, all divided by the standard deviation, which is 4. Or equivalently, you can just use the cumulative distribution function of the standard normal uh, at 0.6 minus 1 is 0.4, and then you do 0.4 divided by 4, so that is 0.1. So 5.1, and you get the same exact thing. So for a, uh, a normal random variable with a mu of 1 and a standard deviation of 4, the probability that that variable is going to be less than 0.6, uh, and this should have a negative on it, I apologize. Um, so the probability that this is going to be less than 0.6 is the same as the probability that the standard normal is going to be less than negative 0.1. It is the same exact thing and because of this relationship here. Um, the last thing I want to just mention is instead of using phi, we sometimes use a q. So if you see anything that's called q of x, this is called the tail probability and basically it, all it is is it's 1 minus phi of x. So where the normal distribution, the, the standard normal distribution looks something like this, and phi of x gets you, uh, so say that this is the x that we're looking for, phi of x gets you everything back here. So you're integrating up to x. So this here is phi of x. If you're instead looking for q of x, you will end up with here. So the q function, is 1, because that is the total integral over this entire Gaussian, um, minus phi of x, which is what I have written here. So I hope that this has helped you understand Gaussian random variables a little bit better. And uh, let us know how you like the PowerPoint. Maybe we can do this a little bit more. Um, and I uh, hope you guys learned something, and have a nice day.